Now, as, as I recall your, your history, you were um, one of the first to question um, Theranos and, and some of their data or lack thereof. Is that accurate? That was uh, the case. Uh, I, I wrote the first uh, uh, paper in uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association that questioned Theranos and their strategy and their technology. At that time, they had a valuation of $9 billion, and uh, uh, they were very famous. Their CEO was uh, getting one accolade after another, and uh, they were thought to be disrupting everything in health and healthcare and society and diagnostic testing and medicine and everything that you can imagine. So I wrote that piece that was very skeptical, and I said, I see no evidence. They have published nothing in the peer-reviewed literature, and uh, I really don't know uh, what they propose as an idea actually doesn't make sense to me. Just testing people massively if they're okay mm -hmm. is not something that uh, tends to have favorable outcomes. We just create problems that don't exist. Sometimes we find problems that exist and we, we're not aware of, but it's more frequent to create problems by over-testing, and same applies to over-medicalizing or, or over-stressing uh, medicine in, in society. So th that was a hard time <laughs> for me. Yeah, and, uh, I was gonna say, those, that's, a, that's, a big, <laughs> uh, um, that's a big enemy to take on. Of, of course, so I, I got phone calls from the, the general counsel asking me to recant uh, uh, at some point, saying that, well, why don't you recant and write uh, another piece with our CEO uh, saying that I recant and now I have seen the light and uh, <laughs> everything seems uh, splendid and perfect. And I, I remember that I had that conversation with, uh, with Theranos uh, in Rome. I, I was giving a, a series of lectures there and uh, I, I was outside the Tempietto of Bramante, which is a Renaissance masterpiece. It's a small temple in an inner courtyard surrounded by a bigger church. Unless you are in that courtyard, you cannot see anything. Now, if you are inside, if you're an insider, then you can see the light, you can see the, the glory of the Renaissance, you can see one of the, the masterpieces of, of uh, uh, architecture of all times. It, it felt a little bit like that when they were telling me that, you know, if you become an insider, uh, you will see the glory. Uh, but I was an outsider, and I, I love to be an outsider. I, I don't like to feel that uh, I belong to parties or, or partisan clubs or, or preferred uh, <laughs> sections of society or business or whatever. And I, I try to be objective and say, well, this is what I see. If you want me to be convinced, I need to see the evidence. I need to see the data. So COVID-19 was pretty similar in that regard because, again, we had to see the data, we had to see the evidence to see what are we doing and where are we heading. So you, now I take this back, you really are the bad guy. You like to, you <laughs> like to be the outsider. We like you, to use the word fringe. Man. Yeah, yeah. Being an outsider, you're free, isn't yeah. it?